girl? What's up, girl? Okay, silence real quick. Okay. Ready, fellas? Rose like makeup, damn it. Okay, so we've got ten seconds. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the moment of silence when it's at ten, and then I'm gonna run right through. Okay. La, 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 la. Favorite is first. Okay. Moment of silence in three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another edition of your favorite podcast, the GYST Podcast, also known as Get Your Shit, Shit. Together. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your one of your hosts, Roh Rohila, and joining us in the studio, as always, to my right. Ooh, I didn't realize I was on your right. I was like, wait, where? That's me. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Kyle Reed. Ruben Marquez. I'm at Bar Lodge on the mic. So, yeah. So, Ruben, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having me. Back yeah. to back, homeboy. Right? That's what I like to see. Ruben, just... So, you've listened to a couple of our episodes, hopefully, by now. Yes. What, what has your experience been? Like, when you were thinking about all of us... Because you know all of us on a personal level. So, when you thought about what it must be like in the studio... How has your experience been compared to just as a casual listener? Uh, completely different. I thought it was just so random mm -hmm. when you guys were just on here. Like, okay, here's a real quick topic. And then everything was just all over the place, right? Going, oh, we're going to talk about this. I was like, wow, it's actually really structured. Really, you guys have a flow with it. Cool. <laughs> I thought you guys just like meshed well together. There's a method but to the madness. Now that I'm here, I actually see that you guys have a whole script down. <laughs> the topics you guys are talking about completely different than what I thought. Yeah, so like not like a script really, but we do outline a couple things. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And you thought we were just like, man, I thought they just talked. Hey, we, yeah. have to, uh, we have to get our shit together too. We do. <laughs> we do. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It sounds like we just talk in circles, but. <laughs> and this is also a result of some very awkward episodes, I think, where we had a topic. And the beginning, it, it, like, we, you know, for the first, like, 20 minutes, we don't know what to talk about. And it's just awkward. We're talking about some random things. And then at the end, we're just like, it just Clicking. clicks. Next and, thing you know, we got a 45-hour minute long episode. Yeah. Hour minute long. I like it. 45-hour minute? Yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> it's time measurement method. <laughs> oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, today's is going to be a good one because it's all about one of the one of the, a lot of the feedback that we've been getting from from all of you listeners is you really liked the series that that we've done so far, how how to make the most of summer, and then we did how to make the most of fall. So, what are we gonna do? How to experience winter? So that's what today is all about: making the most of winter. What you can do, what you cannot do. And here's the thing: during the summer, what we talked about was most of your summer is planned for you. You have so many events that really it's other people filling your schedule. Now is a little bit of a lull. This is where you need to proactively schedule and plan out your schedule so that when people reach out to you saying, hey, there's a party here or a party there, like, no, I'm going to Kyle's bachelor party because he's going to propose. In but Japan. You don't have a bachelor party after you propose, but we can do that, and then we can have another one just no, for the wedding. No, you do a bachelor party before the wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weddings aren't in the winter. You just like completely went away from what oh, you just okay. said. Oh, I'm with you, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, be proactive in this. And what I'm going to say is there are certain things that you can do. One, experience something new every year. Every year, make it a point to experience something new. And there's so much stuff that the fellas are going to talk to you about. There's different Christmas plays, concert. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you. He said the fellas. <laughs> Sledding. I mean, there's there's so many new things that you can do, and Stop taking all my motherfucking ideas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, now here's the thing: spring and summer are meant to be enjoyed more outdoors, right? That's when you're hiking, you're camping, you're, you're doing all those things outside. Fall and winter are meant to be enjoyed more indoors. 
Here is says, my giant says asterisk. Who? Says who? Oh, hold on, I'm getting there. No, fuck that. Dang! Says who? This is why I don't like working with Japanese Portuguese people. <laughs> has nothing to do with my <laughs> cultural background. It has everything to do with my programs. I know. <laughs> you hate being indoors. Oh, but but here's the thing. Fall no, and winter are <laughs> fall and winter are indoor are mostly indoor seasons, right? But here's the thing. Make those indoor events outside of your home. So many people are just going to be like, you know what? It's cold outside. I'm just going to stay home all winter long. And before I know it, it's spring again. No, there's so much stuff to do out and indoors. But at different events, you have to be proactive in doing this kind of stuff. And here's my thing to Kyle Reed. Because this was in my notes too. Play it. All right, play it. There's so many things that you can do outside as well, right? And I have a question to ask everyone at home right now. When was the last time you built a snowman? Right? Think about that kind of stuff. And I'm not talking about you do it all the time because you've got kids or anything like that. No, I'm talking about you. When was the last time you built a snowman? Find your inner child. Yeah. That episode was one of my favorites. What was it, episode 22 or something? Let me look at my notes. <laughs> no, we ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I got about... bronchitis. <laughs> 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 He's talking about everybody should be indoors, you know, and, and enjoy. I'm like, man, I love being outdoors during the winter and fall. Do you? It's it's the change yeah. of the air. It's the briskness of it. I love it's, that. It's the leaves. Yep. In, in all honesty, because we are just talking about it off air. When we walked earlier. That and stars. I love astronomy, oh, bro. and the stars are so crisp and clear when it's not cloudy in, you know, the Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest area. But the stars are beautiful during in the, the winter. winter time. Yeah, it's a, it can, it's a different stars that you see during the summer at night. Yeah. And these are stars that, you know, appear in the Northwest because it's overcast, cloudy. We don't get to see. So when it comes out, I love going outside. I hate the cold. I'll tell you that. I bundle up and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, that's the only thing that would probably stop me. But I'm thinking about, like you said... Being proactive and going out, I'm like, man, I love that. Now I get to walk Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf. What in the fuck is a Gandalf? Really? People don't know what a Gandalf is. Gandalf was an Estadi sent here by... Oh, sorry. Uh, what? Stop it. Estadi. Who is Gandalf? From Lord the of the Wizards. Wizards. Who is Gandalf in my, your life? My German Shepherd. Your puppy. German Shepherd, your new puppy. I don't think yes. we've discussed this, so that's why I'm asking. I think we said it once or twice, but oh, never really actually formally introduced. We assume that people know that you have a new puppy named Gandalf. Game, yeah. <laughs> I did get a new puppy. Gandalf is his name. Uh, and he walks a lot faster than Bowser. Yeah, yeah. He definitely bullies Bowser. Bowser is a Chihuahua Pomeranian, so he's a small seven-pounder versus Gandalf is like 38. And he's right fucking... Now. Yeah. And he's a few months old. No, Bowser's taking him out. Oh. Bowser's going out of his, like, lips, tackles him down. Like, no, this is my house. So, like, I have to start training Gandalf differently now. But we're getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love the brisk, cold air of winter. I love that. I, I think snow has a smell. Go ahead. I was going to say, so, yeah, to your point, you know, everyone kind of does more indoor stuff during winter. I'm from... Southwest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we go out during the winter. El Paso, We try to stay inside during the summer (laughs) when it's like 130 degrees. Yeah. You know, know, well, you cook an egg on the street and there's your breakfast. (laughs) So. (laughs) You put a cookie sheet out there. Not even a cookie sheet, man. Just toss it out. Run the concrete. Right? Um, But, yeah. So, like, building a snowman, right? When was the last time you built a snowman? I can't even remember because it's, you know, desert. See yeah. around. I moved up here to the northwest and I'm like, what are those green things it's all good, over the place? That's actually a good point. We're, we're, we're talking about look like yeah. cactuses. Yeah. We're talking about snow. We're talking about all these things. What about the people who are living who don't in even have it? Yeah. That's why I said South America. Yeah. Australia. Australia. Well, what about those yeah. type? Of, what, what would you do in the wintertime for that then? We do a lot of things like indoor things, outdoor things too, but like going to see plays like the Nutcracker or anything like that, right? Those, we'll, we'll do that too. Um, going, like, for me, growing up in El Paso, Texas, we would go to, um, fake snow, we would go to White Sands, 
which is just white sand, right? Big old hills. <laughs> and we would go sledding down those. That's <laughs> dope. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds so really much fun. fun. When it's yeah. not 145 it's a lot of, degrees It's a lot outside. of fun, but yeah. the thing is, is it's, it's sand, it's not snow, so, you know, building a, a snowman is something we really didn't do. Now, every once in a while, we would actually get snow, so we would get a good, like, inch and a half. Sounds you know? like us. And then... That's about it. So you're just going around like five neighborhoods and just build a, you know, five inch snowman. You know, so it's bro, it's got a five inch snowman. (laughs) (laughs) And that's only a story because he hasn't put it someplace warm in months. (laughs) Got you good on that. That was good. That That was was good. good. I can't say anything to that. (laughs) No. Anyone else craving apple pie? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. That's fantastic because you know what's funny is I talk about how I could never live in Arizona because the summer's too hot. I can't go golfing. I don't even fucking take into account that October through April is perfect golfing weather. And you get good discounts if you go during the summer. Yeah. Because you go no at night. to golf when it's 112 degrees You go outside. towards the nighttime. So then you yeah. get, like, you know, a good golf course for, like, five bucks. Or five o'clock in the morning. Or five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, one of the two. When it's only 90 degrees instead of 110. <laughs> that shit sounds terrible still. But I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So those are things that I had never even really considered. So, Ruben, I'm going to challenge you to go find some snow this winter. And I'm talking about some serious snow. Take the family to the mountains or something. So that's already being done. And you're already halfway there where you live at now, right? You, you go, go outside. Take and 410. Snow. <laughs> yeah. You take Highway 410 up Crystal Mountain. Snow everywhere. Yeah. So this year, indoor outdoor activities actually. We're gonna try to look at doing that train to Lemonsworth. Oh, I've heard about that. I've never nice. done it. I heard it's awesome. Yeah, I heard it's yeah. mm-hmm. awesome. Right? It's like the whole Polar Express thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna take the kids on that. But then there's also uh, going to Leavensworth. Leavensworth is amazing. Have you ever been there? That? No, I haven't oh, been there yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Especially cool during the winter time. time. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. And then to the mountains and go sledding in the snow and all yeah. that stuff. Actual snow, not sand, right? So, <laughs> not white sand. It looks like sand. snow. And to the listeners, Leavensworth is like a bohemian small town in like the mountains. So during the winter, it's... There's no S in the word, by the way. I know. That's why I was like, it's Leavenworth. But yeah, Thanks go ahead. Thanks for nitpicking and... Keep going. <laughs> Fuck it now. Stop it! <laughs> Keep going. It's your accent. That's what Did you say Bavarian town? Have an accent? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Leavenworth. Talk about it. It's Bavarian town. What else were you saying? Oh, so when you're there, there's high mountains. Yeah. So, like, it literally looks like you're on this mountainside. It's snowy. It's, it's beautiful. You'll have a good time, man, for sure. During the holiday season with the kids, pictures amazing there because pretty much it's all lit up with Christmas stuff and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Lyrics awesome. love it. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. It's, as Amit mentioned, especially if you've been there in the summer, it's still fun too. It's awesome. and It's it's hot. It's Eastern Washington, right? So it's a very dry climate in the summer um, and very, very hot. So it has polar extremes in weather. But the hillsides and mountains are just bare. They're brown. They're ugly. It's still cool because there's like these sharp rocks, you know, the very uh jagged edges of these mountains and hillsides but in this in the fall and winter and early spring there's still snow on the mountains and it looks fucking awesome uh, yeah you'll enjoy it. i really love leavenworth it's 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 a fun fun town very very fun town um so yeah man you gotta come back and tell us about that stuff when you go do it absolutely bring the kids and just enjoy it i love winter y'all talk about people think that winter is time to stay inside uh, it's been well documented that I haven't ran in a long time, gained some weight and shit like that, you know, but well I'm comfortable. Documented. But, well, I was going to talk about the, the the run streak I did a couple years ago, mm, right? We yeah. talked about it on air. I was literally outside every single day of the year. I ran in multiple countries, multiple states, multiple climate zones, and multiple, multiple continents. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, absolutely. I ran in multiple hemispheres. I ran in multiple <laughs> continents and hemispheres in one day. Seriously? Technically, yeah. I ran in Atlanta in the morning, and I ran in Peru at, later on that night. That's that is true. That's <laughs> really funny. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I and I absolutely hate running inside. I can't stand it. I hate treadmills. I hate fucking 
ellipticals, all that shit. So I ran outside. I was literally outside every single day of the year. And I realized there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes for the weather. Hmm. So bundle up if you have to. Hmm. Put gloves on, <clears throat> put on a Gore-Tex jacket. If you ain't from the Northwest or some or the Northeast, you don't know what Gore-Tex is. You probably just found out what Gore-Tex was when you moved up here. I didn't even knew what galoshes were, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? Well, I don't need that shit. Go into white sand. I don't even know how to spell galoshes. <laughs> I don't need it. That's a long telling. Yeah. Gun. Um. But that's what I'm talking about. I love being outside. I love to go skiing. When I'm in the mountains skiing, like, man, that's that's my shit. Just the cold, the crisp air being surrounded by. Mountains are so massive. Majestic. Majestic yeah. and humbling. Yes. To be around something that much bigger than you, right, I think really really puts you in a place to appreciate things around you much more and realize that you are not the sun. You are Pluto. <laughs> it's still a planet, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Things don't revolve around you. <laughs> I know. I'm planet I know. X. I'm planet X. Man. Um, okay, you could be Neptune, whatever. Mvemshna. Uranus? Mvemshna. <gasps> Mvemsh? Saved by the bell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, Uranus was visible to the naked eye recently. Yeah, so I saw. I didn't see it, but I saw it. Yeah, it was. I don't think you got it. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> but that, that's that's the type of shit I'm talking about. I I absolutely do, love doing that. Every year, when not it's pretty recent, two or three years now. We go on a ski trip in January. It's kind of like my dad's thing for us for Christmas because I think recently we realized we don't really need a lot of material possessions. So we don't really do gifts. My dad's birthday, just this past weekend, we went to Hood Canal and kicked it for the weekend, got a few oysters, had dinner together, played games together, watched a movie together, went on a hike together, and it was not at all about any material possessions. No gifts were exchanged because it was all about spending time and hanging out. So I think we've come to the conclusion that for Christmas we do the same thing. So that's something my dad does for us, rents a house in the mountains, something you can ski in and ski out of, we would just go to Snoqualmie because it's close and, and simple. And my sister was going to Central for a while, so she's right on the other side of the mountains right there. And it's fucking awesome. I Still absolutely love it. said a house that you can ski in and out of. I've never gone skiing, so that to me was just like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's there's a lot of houses at Snoqualmie uh, on the hillside. Uh -huh. And it's not on the actual path where the lifts are. But the road, there's so much snow on the roads. You literally just put your, you walk out the front door, you put your skis on, and you ski down the road to the lift. Wow. <laughs> I, yeah, like we cool. had to go in this little housing community area. You know, just think about it, just like little twists and turns, but they're on a mountain, right? So the houses are up here, and there's turns that come down the road. Gotcha. So you go one direction, you're going downhill. The other direction, you're going uphill. You go downhill, and then we had to go through a trail that was like between some houses. I don't know how legit it was, but the trail was already there, so people had done it. So we went through, and you go through the trail behind these houses, and you're on, you're on the mountain. And you go down and buy your lift ticket, hop up and go skiing. You already get basically one ride for free. Going exactly, down, exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, and it's cool. fucking phenomenal, man. I love skiing, so that's that's a fantastic winter memory for me. That's one of my favorite things about winter is, as winter comes, winter is coming. I think winter is here. I think it winter is here. There you go. I don't want you. <laughs> so, I think that snow has a scent, and you can smell snow coming. I'm like, oh, it smells like snow. It makes me excited as fuck. I love it. And I'm a weirdo. I have a lot of outdoor jackets and gear. I love trying out my coats. Oh yeah, that's like one of your things is is outdoor jackets. I fucking love it. I got a bunch, dude. It's yeah. stupid. It's stupid. It's like shoes for me. But if it's raining, I'm like. Pfft. This rain ain't shit. I got a jacket that'll handle all that. I'll put it on right now and go outside. <laughs> Bitch ass rain. I'm weird. I know it's weird as <laughs> fuck, but that's my thing, man. That's my thing. Um, so it, it's. I thought of something when you guys talked about Leavenworth, right? So I I did take the train to Leavenworth. Unfortunately, there was a. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. People on YouTube. Um, you just saw Kyle hurt himself, which was pretty funny. Um. So I did take the train to Leavenworth, right? And unfortunately what happened was there was a truck that at an intersection mm -hmm. um, stopped or, or 
ran out of gas or something. I mean, whatever. On the highway or um, in on, Leavenworth? No, it was on the train tracks. Oh, so shit. we had to stop. And it took like three hours for them to like remove it. So oh, my goodness. Essentially, we'd get to Leavenworth and we're there for like an hour and we had to turn back around. Um, but that one sucks. of the... One of the highlights of it was I went with three friends. And, you know, there's only two people per seat. So they're like, Rohan, you're, you're social. You sit by the stranger. And <laughs> so I end up sitting next to this person. Um, her name is Amy Brennan. And this must have been like 10 years ago. And I still keep in great t- contact with 10 her. 10 years ago? Holy shit. Because the people did, her family did the same thing to her. They're like, you're social. You sit with the stranger. And we've just kept in touch, and, and that was phenomenal because I think it's important to know that there's also, it's not just these events for the sake of having these events, but there are ways to make new connections. And the other thing is we talked about snow. Snow, to me, gives me a whole new appreciation for landscape. Like, whenever it snows, I, I love living in Washington. And you take Fall. a look at all those trees yeah. with snow on it, it just makes it feel so small, almost like you're looking at a snow globe. And so with that... What I'm going to tell people is if you have ever thought about photography, like outdoor photography, uh, landscape photography, winter is a phenomenal time for it. What you want to do is make sure you adjust the white balance because of the snow, because your pictures are going to come up way overexposed and everything's Mm -hmm. going to look white. And the reason why I'm saying that is because as you get more and more into photography and you learn how to balance your white balance, there's so much that you can do. So color you, temperature. Yeah. Whoa. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> you surprised me today. Well, Same thing I, with like baseball. Like earlier, you, when we were talking head. about... Hmm? He got um, he did. He said, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And so... Yes, yep. Yeah. And so here's the thing. Like, pick up a new hobby. Photography is one of those that you can do at any time, right? But during the winter, it's a whole new appreciation for it. Go out there with your camera and take some stuff. It's a great time. But it's all about exploration. That's the key thing here. No matter what, no matter where you're at. No matter exploration, where you're at. And, and that's what I was thinking too, right? Was I'm thinking maybe we should talk about, we talk about how to experience winter. Mm-hmm. And we discuss things that the three of us had never really considered. And I think of Kamal as well, because he didn't come here until he was a, a, really, essentially a teenager, mm-hmm. right? Um, and Ruben lived most of your life in between Arizona and Texas. He didn't have snow really in the winter at all it wasn't a thing you didn't have cold forget snow you see cold so and that was something (laughs) that was weird to me when i went because i've never really experienced a winter or a holiday outside of the northwest until i went to peru uh two years ago and it was fucking weird to see christmas decorations and it was 70 degrees outside it was so obscure to me but that was just normal that was how people did it like because that's the climate, but it's still the holiday. So they still celebrate the holiday, but the climate is the climate. So when you think of a stereotypical Christmas, waking up on Christmas morning with snow on the ground, that never happens. That's It's not even a hope for some people because they don't even think it could ever possibly be a reality. Yeah, We think it could possibly be a reality. We don't get it very often, so we still hope. Do you ever hope for snow on Christmas morning? Oh, yeah, all the time. Right? All the time. But do you ever get it? Not very. I don't think I've ever gotten it in since I've been alive. I don't think it's happened here before. Only a couple of times. I know I it has. Only because I'll ask my grandma what year it was, because she was like, she makes a big stink about it, because we had relatives in town. Right? In that year, we got snow on Christmas morning, and it was just the greatest thing ever. I'm like, Grandma, you damn right. But I don't remember that shit happening. I'll ask her. I'll find out. But you see what I'm saying? Because because you realize that it's a possibility. Ruben, in fucking El Paso. Never even thought about it, probably. Well, like, no, we ain't going to get snow on Christmas morning. That's What the hell? That's some shit you see in the movies. Right. Well, what about, like, the East... Like, we were talking about, like, East Coast friends and stuff like that. Yeah. What about the people who get too, too much, much snow? Too much snow, right? They can't do something oh, with They hate it. They're sick of it, probably. Yeah. Can't, get can't even get the house. Yeah. 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 Can't get the car. Yeah, yeah it's like... Problems. Forget driving. And we're all telling them to go outside and explore yeah. snow. Yeah, go outside and explore the snow. It's 10 feet outside. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so what do you do then? They're fucking sick of the snow, probably. I think that's the time Call for Christmas it. movies. you damn right. Mm. See, that's what I'm talking about. I was going to say but something. You know, they probably shit. have their own stuff, though. It's, it's just like us. Like, we're, we're known for rain, right? Mm-hmm. But even even if it's raining outside and we've got an outdoor activity planned, 
we'll take a look and be like, you know what? It's raining, but it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. We'll still go do that outdoor activity. Yeah. I, I think you just get used to used to it, you know? Football game, soccer game. They yeah, just like they say, like, like you can tell tourists in Seattle if they have an umbrella. Umbrella. Yeah. Well, you, you get, yeah, you do get accustomed to it, but I think there's a difference of being stuck in. Mm. That's what I mean. Like, oh, like snowed you, in. Like snowed in. Like if literally you can't go to work, you can't do anything. Because on the East Coast, it does pound like with snow, like a lot. So in that type of a situation, how do you take care of it? You could say Netflix and show, you can watch movies and stuff, but it's the perfect time to do self-reflection. Yes. That's good. I mean, I this is your that. own solitude. This could be your own time to have your personal space. You can meditate, yeah. like our previous episodes. Um, I think that's, that's a good thing. I never really thought about what if you're snowed in, because like you said, it wasn't a possibility for me. I never have considered being snowed in. No. Because if, if I do, I'm pretty sure I'm losing power, I'm losing all that stuff, so... <laughs> yeah. For me, it's going to be candlelit, you know, self-reflection. Like the other episode about managing family, what if you're snowed in with family? Oh. <sighs> How do you manage that? Yeah. Man. <laughs> How, yeah, without killing somebody. <laughs> play dice. Play cards. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. I right? could so do other stuff, too. We're ta- yeah, you're right. <laughs> we're talking about being snowed in once. What if it happens multiple times a year every year? Because yeah, that's just the climate. That's just what you deal with. Globe getting warmer anyway, though. It's not going to happen no more. (laughs) Oh, man. Good shit. Good shit. So, how to experience winter in the Northwest. Yeah. That's really what it is. Currently, it's our views, and we got El Paso, Texas, right? Yeah. Texas. Sorry. Didn't know if it was El Paso. And we have two phenomenal songs. Okay. Uh, One is uh, Christmas in the Northwest. Phenomenal Christmas song here. By who? I, I don't know. What the hell? Christmas in the Northwest. You guys have heard it, right? I don't you can sing. So. You just can't wow. sing on key. And then the other one is uh, Walking in Seattle's Latte Land. That's a song? Yeah. Walking in Seattle's Latte Land. Don't play with me. No, serious. And, and it's, uh, what? what's the original song? Winter Wonderland. Yeah. And, but they do it to... <laughs> But they do it to, like, Seattle's Latte Land, and they talk about, like, coffee grinding and all this kind of stuff. And that sounds dope. I'm about to bump awesome. that on the way home. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have those on the website. Do it. Bang that. I like it. As Rohit's typing, we're all just sitting here quietly. <laughs> typing? It, it, I think um, he, I got overall, a Sorry, sorry. The overall arcing between how to get the best out of summer, how to get the best out of fall, mm-hmm. how to get the best out of winter is... Do something. Yeah. I, I, the overall arc is go out there, do something, or stay in and, and reflect. Step if you, you literally can't zone. go anywhere, just stay in and reflect on your own because that's perfect time. Yeah. But if you have the ability to go out and experience something, experience it. Step outside your comfort zone. Yeah. And yeah. to your picture thing, the winter pictures during the night are way better. So if you're trying to take, oh, yeah. take car Those shots. Long exposure shots. Yes. Because mm. the lens is already cool, it's not hot, it doesn't flex, there's nothing there, it's, it's, they look nice. Don't worry, we'll go soon. I think she's got to go to the bathroom. Good so. shit, good shit. Yeah. Rohit's talking about a dog, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Not, not a woman, not, not not a woman that he has locked up in the closet <laughs> like Rick James. I'm puppy sitting. <laughs> we'll let you out soon. Stop and, it. And so here's the other thing I, I just want to tack on real quick before your two-minute takeaway. Um, so if you are stuck at home, right? There's still ways where you can be stuck at home, but still branch outside of your comfort zone and enjoy new things. Kyle, I'm going to talk to you. That's going to be so funny. Our microphone just fell. <laughs> Sam's going to be so mad if he listens. Oh, well, no. If this bang is in the episode, he we'll turns go. to me and goes, Will, no. Yeah. People on YouTube at home? Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be like, they'll all of us are like, what the hell is that? people on YouTube right now, this is what happens. Told you, we're amateurs. Fuck it, I'm just gonna hold it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, still I on? gotta go to the bathroom. Can you yes, hold still it? On. No. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll just say this really quickly. There's still ways to, to do stuff that's outside of your comfort zone. Kyle, for example, between episodes, what were we talking about? We were talking about astrophysics and theoretical physics. And you're like, wow, I never really thought about those kinds of things, but that's really interesting to me. If you're snowed in, Have turn to a channel that you've never turned to. You know, do do these kinds of things. Like, there's there's so much stuff that you can still do. People fall into their routines because it's comfortable for them. But but if you're doing stuff that's comfortable for you, you're not growing. You're not expanding. 
you're not becoming the best version of you that you can possibly be. So even if you're stuck at home, watch some theoretical physics. Watch a black and white movie, which I still refuse to do because it sounds pointless to me. But there's still so many things that you can do that you've never done before. But do it. Try making nachos out of Doritos. Nike. It's phenomenal. Hey, and it's cheaper than getting the nacho chips at 7-Eleven. Yeah. You buy a bag of Doritos, mm -hmm. you go over there and put that cheese on that bad boy. Don't play with me. That's dinner tonight. Ruben knows all about nachos. He's Mexican. You're racist. No, it's true. That's nachos. Speaking of which, when I first met Rohit. Oh, oh yeah. I'm glad this came up. This. I'm glad this came up. Um, oh, are we out of time? Nope. No. No. So, when I first met Rohit, one of the things when we were actually sitting next to each other from our desks and everything, he turns to me and says, hey, I just bought a house. Question for you, because I'm pretty sure you know, is what's a good lawnmower to buy? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that story. <laughs> so, of course, obviously, I don't know. Why don't you know what lawnmower to buy? Like a really good lawnmower to buy? I don't know. I just grab a lawnmower and I just mow my lawn. I don't actually know a whole lot about, you know, what brand is better and so it's not and all because that stuff. it's not because you're Hispanic and he stereotypically uh, <laughs> assumed that you were uh, uh, ran a lawn service. Right. Exactly. Not because of that at all whatsoever. But what happened though? So <laughs> I remember when this happened. Like somebody else turned around or something happened. Like what? Well, the first time I actually met Rohit was, it was during Halloween, my first year here uh, at work. We had a scavenger hunt, and one of them was to find Rohit, but he was actually out that day. Mm. And I just got instant messages and emails from random people, like, hey, you look like Rohit. Why don't you come by to take a picture to say we've just been with Rohit? I'm like, who is Rohit? Uh, who is who the hell is this guy? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I guess so. And then I go and take these pictures and everything. And I finally see Rohit sitting down at a desk one time. And I go up to him. And I just make it completely awkward on purpose. And I said, hey, uh, everyone says we look alike. Nice to meet you. And I walk right off. He <laughs> 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 was like, what happened? Um, but yeah, but then he got a new position at work. And he was sitting right next to me. And he brought that comment up. And it was hilarious. And then another time, too, not like probably like two, three weeks down the road, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, man, I just moved up here. I'm looking for a good Mexican restaurant to go to. <laughs> Authentic. Authentic, you know, something I can go to. And he's like, yeah, I got the perfect place. <laughs> and we start driving for lunch, and he takes me to Taco Bell. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. And he used to call it T-Bell. Like, T-Bell. What, T what the fuck is that? I never even thought of it. Yeah. So that's my experience with Rohit. And that was your first, wasn't it your first time at Taco Bell? Because you had actually never been, right? Or had you been before, but it had been like years. It's been like years, years, years. And you're like, nobody eats Taco stuff. Bell. Yeah. But actual tacos are really good. Yeah. He was that's, so happy, that's too. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Good shit. Well, moral of the story is, make memories. Make memories. No matter what season it is, summer, winter. That's our total. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. It's time. Ora, ora, ora. For Kyle Reed's two minute takeaway. Away, away, away. Aren't they crazy, Layla? They're crazy. <laughs> this dog is looking at y'all like you guys are wild as hell. So. That's the moral of the story. Make memories. How to experience winter in the Northwest. If you're Kyle, you go on a family ski trip. Or you just go on a ski trip. Go skiing by yourself. Go in the mountains. Find some snow. If you're in El Paso, find some white sand. <laughs> Sled down that shit. Another fond memory I have as a child, a school that I went to had a hillside behind a backstop where the, the, where the baseball field was. Whenever we got snow, we would go and sled down that hill. It wasn't very big, but that was the biggest hill in the world. And we sled down that bad boy. And I loved it. I'll never forget it. Take up photography. Stay inside, play a game. Connect with yourself. Talk about astrophysics. Whatever it is, do something new. Step outside your comfort zone. When was the last time you built a snowman? Five inches. Five inch snowman. 
and roll his pants. You guys are disgusting. I can't stand you guys. <laughs> but think about that. Proactively plan your winter. We talk about how the summer gets planned for us, and every weekend comes and goes, and you don't even realize what you did with the time. And next thing you know, it's winter. Don't just make it through winter. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only such thing as bad clothes for the weather. Prepare yourself and get outside. Enjoy yourself. And with that, we leave you with another fantastic episode of the GYST Podcast. Get your shit together. Keep on listening. Keep on getting your shit together. GYSTpodcast.com. Hit us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. And leave us your feedback. Subscribe to the YouTube video. Or subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like all the YouTube videos. And share that shit. My man Ruben from Tejas. Thanks again for coming, player. We appreciate it. Thanks, I man. really appreciate your insight on uh, Taco Bell. Winter, not, 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 not Taco Bell. Not Taco Bell or lawnmowers. But I'm going to ask you. i got to buy a lawnmower too, bro. What kind? Snapper, Honda. Like, what, are you, what are you thinking here? Actually, I bought myself one of those Greenworks. Greenworks, the electric yeah. one? Yeah. Is it working well? It's amazing, actually. Oh, man. I'm about to fuck with that. Can I borrow it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most people want to borrow ketchup or sugar. I got all guardian tools. You would. <laughs> I didn't even mean it to be racist. You did. No. Everyone's mad at me. Not. People laugh at you and encourage you. What? It's because I'm calling out stereotypes. I'm not living up to them subconsciously. <laughs> In the back of your subconscious, you thought, hey, he's Mexican. <laughs> he owns a lawn service. I'm going to ask him what lawnmower to buy. And you didn't even realize you were being racist because in the back of your mind, you knew to ask a Mexican person. Or because he sat next to me and he was the only one near me that would mow a lawn. No. We were surrounded by women. And women don't do anything outdoors. They belong in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> totally just kidding. Totally and just kidding. there goes one, the listenership. 100%. The Holy shit. shit. <laughs> Sam, edit the fuck out of this, bro. <laughs> Listen! Oh, Stop God. playing games! Oh, Edit that out! God, we got Harvey Weinstein over here! <laughs> Holy shit, man! Oh, totally joking. That was good. That was good. It was it was comical. I'm glad it was you, not me. <laughs> so, I'm so glad I'm only wait. on this episode. Oh, right here. So, oh, again. My gummel call <laughs> Oh, yeah, there we go. I see Matt Cambridge. So, really what I was just getting to is thanking you for your insight and, and giving us uh, a, a look at holiday season, what we experience as winter for someone else in a completely different climate zone. Um, and now all I'm thinking about is sledding in white sand. That, that sounds, sounds badass. It gets everywhere. <laughs> My man. Just like having Anakin? sex on the beach. Yeah. From, from Star, 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 Wars? Star Wars, he's like, I hate sand. It gets everywhere. So thanks it's again. Like one of the most like cheesy lines out there. Tune in next week to another fantastic episode of your favorite podcast, the GYSD Podcast. Get your shit together. Next week, we're going to have a fantastic episode for y'all. What is it? What is it? What do we got next week? No? We don't get that one? <laughs> Black Friday shopping tips. Ooh. Tune in for that Ooh, one. That, yeah, that'll be a good one. We're coming back for y'all. We're going to have some great information for you guys. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Especially the ladies. Bye. Ruben is taken. No, I'm saying because Rohit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Like, bye, bye. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> it's a permanent snowman now. Yeah. <laughs> a five-inch snowman. When you kept doing that, I was saying... I know it was vibrating, yeah. but it, it wasn't picking up on that. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I kept on still doing got it. Got it. Yeah. You're like, I got So this. we switched it around? Yeah, that's why I fucked up. Yeah, I was like, as soon as you said I'm like, oh, no. Because we recorded this because it was just there, but we decided we wanted it to come out closer to the holiday. Yeah. We can switch them. I don't really care. I'll just switch these. It doesn't really matter. It's it's just a, a simple rename of the file. Yeah. But did, so, we, did we say anything in the episode, no. or do we just not care? No. We didn't say 86. Because this was originally written as 86, and this was 87, but I changed them because I looked at that again because I forgot about it. But I'm just going to take these off, and then... I'm going to let someone else decide. Well, it's going to be us who decide. What do we want to do? Yeah, you guys. Let's just stick with with this being, what, 87? This? Yeah, and we just did 86. 
Okay. So and let's go according to the calendar, because you guys spent a lot of time on that. Perfect. Yeah. Well, you did say welcome back again on this one. I say it every week, welcome back. Oh no, oh, we were like welcome to, back. No to Ruben, yeah. yeah. I think okay. I think at that point, like we've already mentioned, we record yeah. pre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, that was cool. Question for you. Mm -hmm. It and and for you, I guess. Um, I've never used a 360 camera. If that is something that we want to get, where would it go? Like, if it goes right here, does the microphone get in the way, or, or how does how does that work? Well, if, if we're able to get this high enough where it's not being covered, the 360 camera is just going to be like this. Well, can you flip this around upside down? Yeah, yeah. you can do that. So we could. And anything above it is fine because it's, it's... Well, that's what I'm saying. You can put this higher. This yep. can be upside down, and then the camera will just be down here. Yep. And we could, you know, I mean... I want to take a look at this. Too. Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, player. Look at your pension. You get a little excited there. I got so excited. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to our GYST podcast. We hope you learned how to get your together.